Hello everyone, I welcome you on behalf of Akash for the solution segment of J Advanced 2020 Mathematics paper. This time I am going to take up the first paper. This J Advanced was conducted on 27th of September 2020. So let's begin with the first question of this paper 1. Suppose a and b denote the distinct real roots of the quadratic polynomial given by x square plus 20x minus 2020 while c and d are the complex roots for another polynomial given by x square minus 20x plus 2020 lot of use of 2020 then the value of this expression which is involving a b c d that is roots right so before we plan to put the values of a b c d obviously this is not the proper manner what we need to do we have to rearrange it so that we can use sum and product property of the roots let's understand how this question is talking about so when you rewrite this expression you can see a square c plus a square d meaning a square times c plus d sum of the roots of the second polynomial next minus ac square minus a d square so take minus a out to write in this fashion next similarly for b c d as we have done for a c d so this is plus b square into c plus d minus b times c square plus d square now moving forward this is equal to c plus d you can directly put from here c plus d is 20 correct so let's write down 20 a square minus a you can take a and b together so a plus b times c square plus d square this is clear what we are left with this term plus 20 b square now rearranging in fact we can see that a square plus b square can be written as sum and product of a and b so this is 20 times a plus b whole square minus 2ab next you have a plus b the value of a plus b is with you what is that minus 20 so substituting here minus 20 it becomes plus 20 times c square plus d square what is c square plus d square again in the similar fashion as done earlier this is c plus d whole square minus 2 times cd i'm sure this is clear just put the values back this is 20 times a plus b whole square meaning 400 because a plus b whole square is there minus 2ab now what is product ab let's check out the product ab it is minus 2020 twice of it so it becomes plus 4040 plus 20 times similarly here 400 minus 4040 you can clearly see what is going to happen now this 4040 into 20 is cancelled correct what we are left with 16,000 now time to check from the given options 16,000 it is given here as option number D so let's mark it and mention as the required result so I'm sure this is clear time to take up the next question that is question number two if the function f from r to r is defined by fx equals mod x x minus sin x then which of the following statements is true the question is talking about 1 1 on 2 whether it is or not now rewriting the given function fx is equal to we can break it around 0 minus x into x minus sin x when x is less than 0 x into x minus sin x when x is greater than equal to 0 right now moving forward when you talk about one oneness what is required we can go for derivative so that we can check increasing decreasing nature of the function going for the first derivative this is minus 2x plus x sin x derivative that is plus sin x plus x cos x 
this is the case when x is less than 0. Similarly, 2x minus sin x minus x cos x, this is the case when x is greater than 0. When x is approaching to 0, you can clearly see both are approaching to 0, so the function is differentiable as well, but it is not required as of now. Derivative is this one when x is less than 0. Now, can we judge something about these two terms? Yes. What we can see here, let us understand. This is equal to just take 1x with sin x, 1x with cos x or take x common and take 1 with sin x and another 1 with cos x. So, what is going to happen? Let us understand. x times minus 1 plus sin x by x plus minus 1 plus cos x. This is clear. What is there in the second one? Let us write x times 1 minus sin x by x plus 1 minus cos x. First one is when x is less than 0, second one when x is greater than 0. Now, let us understand this result. I am sure you can recall simple inequality given in NCRT itself that is sin x is lying between cos x and 1 when x is between 0 and pi by 2 or minus pi by 2 to 0 can further be extended. Here we can clearly say this is positive, this is positive. So, this expression is positive meaning f dash x is always positive. Similarly, this is negative, this is negative. So, we can clearly see this entire term is negative when x is less than 0. When x is less than 0, this is negative and x is also negative. So, it is going to give you the positive value at all. So, this is clearly increasing function, correct? Now, we can also see that the function fx is odd function because f of minus x meaning from here and f of plus x meaning from here adding that to it is 0. So, function is clearly odd and it is increasing. So, what we can conclude from here? Yes, therefore, f is 1, 1. Now, this is 1, 1. When it is 1, 1, so obviously endpoints will give you the extreme possible values approaching or equal. So, here again we can see it is approaching to minus infinity to plus infinity, taking up all the values. So, clearly we can say also f is on 2, correct? So, what is the conclusion here? Function f is bijective. Let us check out from the given options. Option number 3 is saying f is both 1, 1 and on 2. So, yes, this is our required result. So, I am sure conceptually the question can be understood that how we have to plan for it. Move on to the third question now. Let the function f and g be defined by these two. Then the area of the reason in the first quadrant bounded by the curves y equals fx, y equals gx and x equals 0. Let us understand the functions given. fx is equal to, we can clearly see we have to break it around 1, when x is less than 1, when x is greater than 1. When x is less than 1, what we can see? This term will be written as minus of x minus 1 minus is already there outside, so it will be cancelled. We are getting these two are cancelling each other. So, this is equal to 0 when x is less than 1. Now, when x is greater than 1, what is going to happen? Simply, we need to write e to the power x minus 1 minus e to the power minus of x minus 1 when x is greater than or maybe equal to you can put on. So, this is the breakup for function fx. And what is gx? it is clearly half of e to the power x minus 1 plus e to the power 1 minus x. Let us write down gx. gx is half of e to the power x minus 1 plus e to the power 1 minus x. Now, when these two curves are intersecting, obviously this is never equal to 0. We have to find the intersection point from this one and the second part when x is greater than 1. Solving, we can see half e to the power x minus 1 plus e to the power 1 minus x is equal to e to the power x minus 1 minus of e to the power 1 minus x, we can write it. This two can be cross multiplied. What we are getting? 
when 2 is multiplied this can be taken to the left hand side 3 times e to the power 1 minus x is equal to e to the power x minus 1 or e to the power 2 times x minus 1 is equal to 3. Take log this gives you twice of x minus 1 is log 3 or x is equal to half log 3 plus 1. This is the intersection point. Now just make some rough sketch so that we can understand what is the required portion for this function. So when we try to trace rough sketch, say x's and then the curve like somewhere this one and for other one like this one. So clearly we can see two curves are intersecting at some point which is half log 3 plus 1 and my curve is intersecting with x axis at x equals 1. Which curve is intersecting at x equals 1? The previous one fx. So I am sure this is clear that how we are going to solve this one. Let us write down. Therefore, required area is equal to this is my function g this is my function f integral 0 to half log 3 plus 1 for function gx minus integral 1 to half log 3 plus 1 fx correct for my function this part so that we can get finally this portion. I am sure this is clear. Simple integration is required. Function g is known to us as this one, function f after 1, meaning as we have broken into two parts, this is the portion for f. Integrate simple exponential functions are there on integrating. So, when you simplify, you simply observe that the answer is coming as option number a because simple integration is there for the exponential function and apply the limit. Some calculation part is required, obviously, and that is all what you need to do here. I am sure this is also clear. Time to move on to the next question that is question number four.